welcome. This is Emp One Way here with some more No Man's Sky. So, this video here is kind of a continuation. It is part six of what I have been working on in my series here, going from the live stream into part five. And these events in this video do take place after part five. So, this is my continuation. Uh, a lot of cut scenes here, a lot of cutting and editing as I go through the game and show some important aspects of what's going on. I kind of wanted to take this video as an opportunity to discuss not only my progress, but my thoughts on the game. So this is not a review. I don't do reviews. I'm not an expert. I'm just a guy who likes to play games. But we've been talking about this game a lot uh, with friends and, and I've been seeing here on YouTube and around where I, when I read articles everywhere on different websites and with friends and stuff like that. And... You know, it's just one of those things I kind of wanted, wanted to address and talk about uh, in, in the hype of this game and what it meant. So here you can see I'm at a trading post here or a trading station and I'm talking to one of the aliens there. And one of the things was people complaining about the whole interaction with the alien. Now, there is choices to make and your decisions do affect the outcome of what that decision will be or what it means. Here we can see that we're we're discovering more lands, and this one happens to be a discovery of a waypoint, which opens up uh, something in the game that was previously hidden. So something that you didn't find before, it kind of gives you the location for it uh, to go find it and make it easier to find. Here we are at an outpost where we go meet an alien, and again we have to interact with that alien. You get to pick up some cool items here, like a new multi-tool where you can compare it to the one you have, and possibly buy of the better multi-tool if it is indeed better in this case it is better mine has 10 and this one has 12 so i do wind up picking that up and you can see here in this interaction my choice rewards me with a tribute or some new technology that's been discovered it gives me a blueprint because i chose the warriors they gave me a choice to make and that choice panned out for me in a good way here's another big important aspect of the game where you have to go and find these drop pods these drop pods give you the opportunity to increase the storage of your exosuit and inventory management is a big part of this game it's super important and it needs to be one of those things that you do address as the game plays on because you will need more and more inventory very very important that you are following that aspect of the game because even if you're trying to get to the center of the universe and you're not following the atlas path like i am in this video and in this series you're still going to need access and have the ability to manage your inventory as much as possible. Here you can see me just simply going through and trying to pick up some resources and we'll see that some of the sentinels do get hostile and you do have to fight them off. And the combat, the ground combat of this game is rather simplistic and a bit clunky. Um, when you get attacked by an animal, it's kind of it kind of difficult to take that animal down as they attack you. They don't do much damage. I mean, you're able to kind of keep yourself alive for the most part, so it's not terrible, uh, terribly hard combat. Maybe that's something that will change as, as things go on and they do add more content to the game. They have talked about, you know, dropping some free DLCs and things like that, and if they hold true to that, that would be amazing. This game has a great foundation, um, something that, you know, developers and a small independent company has been working on for five years. That is amazing stuff, and it's only a few people, a very, very small team. This is not some AAA studio that made this game. And the beauty that they put behind it and the artwork and the attention to detail and a lot of aspects really, really makes this game what it is. And you know what? It was exactly what I expected it to be. I didn't expect anything more than what I've seen and what I've gotten so far. Yes, just like any game that's out there, you're going to see repetitiveness. You're going to see things that happen over and over. You're going to visit planets and it's going to be the same concept where you're going to pick up resources or find that drop pod or find that crashed ship or something to that effect. Here you're going to collect some money just for just randomly finding this location. You get money for doing so. And you know what? There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with the repetitiveness because, because each planet is unique in its own way. And I mean, if you're traveling the galaxy for real, what do you expect to find out there? How do you expect this to look any different than what you see here? Planets are going to be planets. An ice planet is an ice planet. It's going to be cold. A volcanic planet is going to be a volcanic planet. It's going to be hot. So, you know, putting the expectations super high, even though it seems like the cool thing to do, 
it's not the right thing to do. This game is everything that it was intended to be, and their big thing was about discovery. That was their big selling point to this. Go out into the universe and discover things and name things. And that's what the great part of this is. I can name any planet or any outpost that I find or any animal or any plant. I can name it anything that I want, whatever I feel like doing. This game is more cathartic and therapeutic than anything else. I come home from work. I go to play this game. I fly around. I discover new planets. I warp into another system completely. And I am enjoying myself the entire time. I I have my own ship. I can go buy a completely different ship when I get tired of it. Here is another aspect of the game that kind of drives through the storyline that is of the game. It's not a huge storyline. It's not super deep or in-depth, but it is part of it. You have to go find these monoliths. This happens to be a Viking monolith, and you know what? It gives you some story of the game. Is it super deep? Is it super detailed? No, absolutely not, but it's just enough to keep you interested and to keep you wanting to go back for more. And I think that's really the, the point here. But again, the foundation is there for something that's going to be more amazing as they go on. And if they do hold true to their promise, like I've said before, and keep adding content, this is a great foundation from an indie studio. They will have the ability because of what the populace has done and the community has done in buying this game to further their resources to make this game even better. Here's one of the aspects of the game that I do wish they would improve, which would be the map. The map is kind of useless. Uh, it doesn't really give you an indication of where you are. It's just a bunch of stars on, on a screen, and it, there's really no rhyme or reason or sense to it. And maybe that was intended to be that way, but I wish I would fix it a little bit easier so you can kind of find where you've been and where you're going type of deal. Even if I wanted to go back to something, it is extremely difficult to find where I've already been to kind of head back that way. Now, in this portion of the game, this is where I am going to visit that Atlas interface, which is integral in this part of the game, the path that I have chosen. I have not chosen the exploration path. I have not chosen to go to the center of the universe path. I have chosen the Atlas pathway. And this is where I'm going around and finding these red orbs and collecting them as I go to meet a specific end game. Now, I already know what the end game is going to be. It's been spoiled for me, but I'm not going to spoil it for you here in this video. You can continue to watch. I will continue to post videos of the gameplay of me going through this uh, and learning things here as well. So, here you are. We're at the, the Atlas interface. We learn a new technology. We learn some words. That is the point of, I guess, this portion here. We're going into the orb, and it's to discover more about the storyline or the creators or whatever this universe is about so as we come into this we'll be rewarded for finding this obviously and given more warp cores and warp cells I mean which is gonna power the ship to get me to the next couple of systems that I can jump jump to so now we're gonna come up upon the Nexus and this is where we're going to interact with this interface and we're gonna get a piece of what the story is about here so they go into the whole diatribe about what it is to be Part of this atlas interface and you're a traveler and everything else and you do have to either refuse it or continue it obviously in this one here because i'm going with the atlas atlas pathway i am continuing it and they're telling you here that there is so much more to learn and that keeps me wanting more that keeps me wanting to come back and for my and my reward is picking up an atlas stone which again takes up my inventory and i have to manage that inventory and make the inventory of my ship bigger or eventually get a new ship with bigger inventory. So here we're looking through some of that inventory system here where I'm trying to make sense of things. I have this Atlas Pass, which I will probably show you later on. Uh, the Atlas Pass is big in opening up areas of the game that you do not have access to from the beginning. You do need that Atlas Pass in order to get there. I have the V1 one version of it. Uh, I guess that means version one. There is a version two and a version three that I've seen so far of doors that are locked that I cannot get access to until I learn how to either uh, make that or able to find the atlas for those particular doors. Again, here's more stuff where I go to a manufacturing facility and again, I have to kind of figure out a small little puzzle in order to get some stuff and I do learn a new recipe. I get a blueprint for making the shield shard. The shield shard is one of those things that I kind of sell uh, because I don't use it often. I'm able to collect enough resources to keep the things that I need what the shield shard would do and it doesn't stack so it's one of those things that, again comes down to inventory management 
This game is very driven on that in that way. Here we're going to come back to another space anomaly. And these are kind of the things that you find in between the Atlas interfaces where you're interacting with aliens. And again, more tests here as we go and we visit this Gek special poli uh, specialist polo. And he asks you questions about your journeys and you're going to interact with him in that way. And how much language have you learned in your travels? You have to be level three or above in order to interact with him here in order to gain what he wants to give to you. And of course, the priest entity, Nada, which is part of the whole Atlas pathway and giving you the choice to either go explore, find the center of the universe, or again, follow that Atlas pathway and giving you the resources and the location to do so. Here again, we come across those drop pods, which I, like I say, and I can't express enough how important it is to find as many of these as you possibly can. I believe I've seen at least three on one single planet. You can probably find more if you fly around enough. The planets are enormous. They are massive and they're absolutely, absolutely huge. So you can find a lot of stuff on one single planet. You could spend a good four to five hours just mining for resources and making yourself a ton of money. Here we some see some of the space combat, which a little bit difficult to do. There's really no up or down in this kind of game. Uh, you are in outer space after all, and it's a little difficult to ward off the enemies or the fighter ships that come after you. Um, if you upgrade your ship and upgrade your cannons, it gets a little bit easier. You don't have to work as hard to do so. Here we're coming into another Atlas interface where I'm going to pick up another orb, learn some more technology, and pick up my warp cells as my reward for finding this particular red orb, as they call it where I will go and interact with the interface once again to see what the path will be and add more to the story of what the Atlas is. There is a purpose in this. I am certain the Wanderer's Way beckons, heedless of direction, freed from all control. And that's what it's all about. I will commit myself to the voyage in all things. And you get your Atlas Stone, and you're going to put that into your inventory, which you, again, have to manage. Manage your inventory well, folks, because that's what it's all about, more than anything else. So, resources that you cannot stack, they do take up a lot of space, and that kind of makes it hard to do things, because you want to kind of hold on to certain stuff here and there once in a while, but you have to be able to manage that as best as possible. So, here we're going to come back into a little bit more of the space combat. I kind of wanted to drop into this again to show you what it looks like right from the beginning, and then when you do get attacked... And in trying to find that ship that does attack you, once you get the hang of it, the first couple of times it's a little difficult, but once you get a hang of it, you can kind of find your way around. I mean, there's markers there to tell you where that enemy might be, but they do come back around on you, and the AI is not fantastically smart in this regard, where they kind of just do like a bombing run on you. And if you can catch them just right, you can come down in one in one gun in one run down on your own. You can definitely gun down the enemies. So here I'm going to again come into. A, uh, I believe another anomaly and we're going to find out more about my atlas, atlas path here so this game like I was saying fantastic game is it worth 60 bucks probably not not from an indie title but again it's, it's enough there's enough here and there's enough to do and I believe that this game has enough replayability in order to make it worth that in the long run so the end goal is to see them get more content to this game can you continue to update the game they talked about sean the, one of the creators talked about how the game was shipped and it was put on a disc and how they worked for five or six more weeks to even to add even more content and there was a day one patch where they added so much more stuff and there are other things that they're talking about bringing as well i want to see them bring the base building aspect to the game i want to be able to go find a planet that i can settle on create my base build my base and then make that my home front and my base where I can continue to either explore or trade or whatever I decide to do if I want to become a warrior and go fight for the warriors against the sentinels or whatever that has to be so again here we are and we're proving our way through the galaxy and this is what it comes down to these are what the inter interactions are you have to prove yourself you have to accrue so much a certain amount of stuff to get to this level five where he's then going to give me a gift for reaching that level and it's some piece of technology or some blueprint that he teaches that he gives to you 
for for that for reaching those milestones so to speak and there's a lot of that in this game as well where you hit milestones for everything as well here we have priest and Nana again talking about the pathway and everything else Nana sees me and explains there are repeating patterns all across the galaxy identical elements where there should be endless divergence this cannot be a coincidence did the atlas do this across the room polo giggles so this is my interaction interaction and i can change my path as the game goes on if i get bored with this atlas path he is giving me the opportunity here to make a decision do i continue with the atlas path do i ask for resources to just continue to explore planets or do i ask for a shortcut to the center which is one of the end games as well those are the three paths that this game talks about these are the three paths that they were discussing before this game came out now this far aspect of it here i find to be a little bit fun um you kind of have to do math here you're figuring out puzzles you become a cryptographer at this point where you're trying to figure out these puzzles and put them together and this beacon here sent a long time ago from a distance system awaits my response three numbers are visible above an empty input box i think i know what comes next yes you have to put in the correct answer in order to gain access here and it will give you access to either a monolith or a crash ship or some outpost that's going to be important part of what you need to discover or something there for you to help aid you in your way and in this game so folks i mean what else is there to say about this game the artwork is beautiful the gameplay is smooth I mean, I've had the game crash on me once and once only. Was not a terrible thing. Um, didn't bother me in the least that I had to restart the game. I believe I've played games that have crashed multiple times that I've gone back and, ga and played. This game is not terrible. It is a good game. It is exactly what I expected. The expectations of others I cannot speak to and I cannot speak about. I would say maybe lower the bar a little bit and give these guys the opportunity to show you what they can bring because again, it's all about the foundation that they've created here for this game. This game has a fantastic foundation. And I believe, and I honestly think, that they're going to come up with some great stuff. They've laid the groundwork. It's all right there in front of us. The beautiful sceneries, the beautiful artwork, the badass ships that are in this game, and the interaction to find that undiscovered and that's the selling point is the undiscovered and yeah you know what it's going to be some repetitive repetitiveness there and that's okay there's nothing wrong with that absolutely not i can still come play this game for hours and not be completely bored out of my mind i still need to find more i still need to get more resources i still need to get plutonium to power my ship i still want to see if i can find new technology or find new blueprints to build stuff it's all very important and it's all very entertaining it's an absolutely entertaining game i can like i said play this for hours and get lost it's not often that i pick up a game and i play it and i lose time when i play it and i definitely lose time when i play this game i will put my head down i will start playing and then i look up and suddenly an hour and a half two hours have gone by and that to me is something significant and that means that it's got my attention this game has definitely got my attention i want to thank you guys for stopping by and checking this out with me and hanging out. I'll see you around the channel, and goodbye now.